Hi students, welcome to Composition and Decomposition Reaction Video Notes. The great thing about this being a video is you can pause it at any point if you need to take extra time to take the notes. You can also scrub backwards or rewind if you need to go back and review anything. Um, you can even scrub forward if you feel like you're getting it fairly well. But let's go ahead and get started. Let's start by writing the essential question at the top of your page in colored ink. How do we recognize and finish composition and decomposition reactions? Now we've talked about all types of reactions before and we're able to recognize them, but now we wanna be able to finish. We wanna be able to be given the reactants and be able to know what the products are of both composition and decomposition reactions. So we're going a little bit deeper with two specific types of reactions. Here's one way we'd suggest preparing your notes. We're just going to be talking about two types of reactions, so I would divide your notes up into two sections. You're welcome to do that now. Let's review composition reactions. You may recall that if we take two reactants and combine them to form one product, that's a way we can recognize a composition reaction. But in this class, I'm only going to give you the reactants. So you need to be able to figure out what the one product is. So let's look at the four types of composition reactions. Now, before we go through each of these, I want to first say, here's all of them. I'm going to give you some, some details, some examples in the next few slides. But one final thing I'm going to say is the only way to be really good at these, or the only way to be good at them is to memorize them. you got to memorize these four examples and know their patterns. Again, I'm going to give you the stuff on the left side, and you need to know how to figure out the stuff on the right side. And so example one, the simplest example is element plus element gives you a binary compound or a two molecule, two element compound. The second example, we have a metal oxide plus water gives you a metal hydroxide. And that could be any metal on the periodic table. The third example is a metal oxide plus carbon dioxide gives you a metal carbonate. And the fourth example is a metal chlorate plus oxygen gives you a metal, metal chloride plus oxygen, sorry, gives you a metal chlorate. So let's look at some specific examples. So here's our first example. Element plus element gives you a compound. At the very top here, we have iron plus oxygen. Those are our two elements. And we're going to get iron two oxide. So that's our fin final binary compound. Now let's look at the second example. This would be more like what you might see. Here we have sodium plus chlorine. What's going to be our product? You might want to take, take a moment to pause the video and see if you can figure it out. Did you do it? Did you figure out that it's sodium chloride? If you did, then you're correct. Now, before we move on, I wanna note that none of these formulas are balanced. You are welcome to pause the video each time and try to balance the video yourself, but I'm not gonna do that because I wanna just focus on the types of reactions. Before we move on, I wanna note that that's the simplest type of reaction and they're not always that simple. It's a common student misconception that we're just taking two things and sitting them next to each other. And that's not always true. When elements do go through chemical reactions, they may rearrange themselves and it may not as be easy as putting two things together. Let's take a look at these next three examples, which will show you what I mean by that. So here we have the second type of composition reaction, which is a metal oxide plus water gives us a metal hydroxide. Here, calcium oxide, calcium is our metal, and we have water, so we're going to get calcium hydroxide. See if you can figure out the next one. Did you get lithium oxide plus water gives you lithium hydroxide? If so, you'd be correct. Now just note that these two reactants are in a different arrangement than the first two, and that's okay. You can switch. You can water could be first and the metal oxide can be second. It doesn't really matter. You're still going to end up with a metal hydroxide. Here's our third example. Metal oxide plus carbon dioxide gives us a metal carbonate. So calcium oxide plus carbon dioxide gives us, gives us a calcium carbonate. Pause the video. See if you can figure out the next one by yourself. Did you get potassium carbonate? If so, you're right. Potassium oxide plus carbon dioxide gives us potassium carbonate. All right, finally, the last type of composition reaction is metal chloride plus oxygen gives us a metal chlorate. So here we have potassium chloride plus oxygen gives us potassium chlorate. See if you can figure out what to do with calcium chloride and oxygen. Pause the video. All right, did you get calcium chloride? If so, you're doing great. All right, let's switch gears to the second type of reaction. It's the decomposition reaction. 
Here we have one reactant and it breaks apart to form two products. So again, I might give you the left side of this reaction and you need to figure out the right side as well as be able to recognize what type of reaction it is. Now the great thing about this is, is all of the decomposition reactions are exactly like the composition reactions. They're literally just flipped. If you flip that arrow, they're the opposite of each other. So instead of going through each of them individually, let's see if you can use that to figure these four out. This is student practice and a good indicator to see if you know what's going on. Now you may use your notes, but let's see if we can figure out, given only the reactants, what are the products? These are all decomposition reactions, by the way, and try to balance them when you finish. Pause the video, see if you can do all of these by yourself, and then we can check them when you're done. Pause the video. All right, are you ready? All right, the first type of decomposition reaction right here, we have, it looks like we have a metal carbonate. Now, if we look at this, so we have potassium carbonate, that's gonna go off into a metal oxide plus carbon dioxide. So we have potassium oxide plus carbon dioxide. All right, let's look at the second example. Here we have a mercury oxide. Well, this one's super simple. This is a metal, this is just two elements and they're gonna break apart into the, bi and, I'm sorry, this is a binary compound and they're gonna break apart into their two elements. Now, don't forget to balance this reaction. This one actually needs balance. The last one didn't, but this one does. All right, here we have potassium hydroxide or a metal hydroxide. Metal hydroxides break apart into metal oxide plus water. I, li I like to think of hydroxide, hydro, hydro is like water. So metal, hy metal hydroxide is metal oxide plus water. And here's the balance portion. We need to put a two, a coefficient in front of potassium hydroxide. All right, here we have a metal chlorate. Okay, metal chlorates break off into metal chlorides plus oxygen. And we need to balance that reaction so that three is there for us. But those are the four types or four examples of the four types of decomposition reactions, which are just reverse of composition. Let's go ahead and end by talking about the driving forces for these types of reactions. Remember, these reactions want to be driven by something. And so the driving forces for these reactions are transfer of electrons. Electrons are transferred between the elements and the compounds. And then finally, the formation of gas. These are two things that drive composition and decomposition reactions. All right, that's the end of the notes. Thanks a lot.